sorry, we didn't have to rehearse this. All right, got everyone else back up. A little bit. Hey, there you go. All right. Two fifty nine attention. I guess the color guard already presented the colors. So. Uh, no wait. Yeah. Uh, if you're not doing any of the stuff, please back up. Okay. Uh, we do that after. We do all this. Uh, Jackson Gray, could you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Jackson Gray? Alex and Gracia, please lead us in the Scout Oak. Oh. Signs up. Guys, signs up. Okay, okay. So, uh, my name is Vincent McAuliff. I am the current senior patrol leader for Troop 59. And uh, before we start, I wanted to uh, 
introduce how the troop is currently doing uh, with a short speech that I wrote. Troop 59 is, in more ways than one, absolutely massive. Every year at summer camp, other troops are shocked to see how, much our scouts, uh, how many scouts our contingent manages to bring along. The average BSA troop numbers approximately 15 scouts, but ours has over 100 registered members. However, among our ranks, which include 25 newbies, 6 scouts, 12 tenderfoots, 9 second class scouts, 21 first class scouts, 13 star scouts, 14 life scouts, and 5 eagle scouts who have not yet graduated, there is an even greater enormity that sets our troop apart from the rest. Commitment. Anyone can see this distinction when they look at the number of Eagle Scouts we graduate each year, along with the impeccable quality of their work, the service we do for important aspects of our community in events like the Fell House and Archer cleanups, and the individual drive that each Troop 59 Scout has to do a good turn daily. Nobody understands this better than our, nobody understands better than our troop that success cannot occur without sustained effort and an unprecedented level of commitment. Even if our meetings are occasionally chaotic or potentially frustrating, I can confidently say as senior patrol leader that Troop 59, when we put our minds to it, can overcome any obstacle thrown our way. A lot has changed over the past few years. We recently moved our summer camp from Ten Mile River to Forestburg, for example. But the lasting commitment of our dear troop never changes. I personally want to thank everyone who both, who both has been and currently is in this troop. Thank you for instilling this value of commitment in me and giving me so many incredible once-in-a-lifetime opportunities throughout my years of scouting. With that, I proudly welcome you to Troop 59 Centennial Celebration. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Um, another scout, uh, Colin Brannigan, is going to address this as well. Come on up, Colin. Thank you. I'll just hold it. All right. <clears throat> Scouting is a lot like a team sport. Before I get into that, I'd like to give you a little background on myself. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Colin Brannigan. I've been in scouting for as long as I can remember, starting in Tiger Scouts up to today as a Life Scout in Troop 59. In the troop, I've seen scouting from almost every position, including Mother Hen, Patrol Leader, and eventually Senior Patrol Leader. However, scouting is not the only thing that I do. I also play on the soccer and lacrosse teams for Northern Highlands. Because of that, I've seen how a team really works. Scouting is a lot like a team sport. The senior patrol leader is the captain, and every player has a vital position. Every meeting is a game, and in order to finish, it requires everyone to work together as a unit. Seeing this similarity between sports and scouting has given me a new appreciation for the program. We all work towards the same goal here in the same way that a soccer team practices for a state championship. The goal is to see one another reach Eagle, complete a merit badge, or just to learn a new skill. Everyone here simply wants to see each other succeed. It's not often that an opportunity to join a team like Troop 59 comes up. It's an environment that breeds success. Multiple Eagle Scouts every year, trips to Philmont, even a week of sailing in the Bahamas. There's truly nothing like this troop. I've had my fair share of time in other scouting programs and among other scouting teams, but there has never been anything like Troop 59 in my life. One of the other programs that I am involved with in scouting is the National Youth Leadership Program in the Greater New York Council. Although I love MYLT and have made lots of friends there, it still doesn't compare. The memories made on trips with your friends outweigh anything else in scouting. And one of my favorite memories from this troop comes from a weekend trip that we took when I was younger. Our campsite was bordered by an electric fence. I don't know why. I don't know why there was an electric fence in an area with kids. Uh, but there was. And that night when we were cooking dinner, Charlie Zoller took our only box of pasta and just threw it over the fence. <laughs> Nobody knew what we were going to do to eat, but Somebody tried to go and get it, and uh, during that time, I think that that was one of the 
most laughter filled moments of my life. And, uh, you know, the chaos of trying to get that box of pasta back was just amazing. You can't find that anywhere else. Only here, with this team of guys, do we get to make memories like that. I'm not the only one with a story like that. I'm positive that every scout in this room has their own favorite story because they're always being retold during meetings and in tents at all hours of the night during our camping trips. There may not be a team trophy in scouting like there are for sports teams, but I like to consider those memories our trophies. They'll stay with us to get forever and will never leave us for the rest of our lives. Troop 59 has given me an experience that is worth more than any other program, club, or class. And I've learned more here about myself and others than I have anywhere else. Every trip has given me a new memory and a new reason to love scouting. And after seeing the impact that this troop has had on myself and other scouts, I'm not surprised that we're celebrating 100 years. A group like this doesn't simply fade away. Finally, I have to thank those that keep the troop alive. The scouts, the parents, the leaders, and everyone that supports us. You are the reason that our team continues to succeed in everything it does. I'm proud to call myself a member of Troop 59, a team without a sport, and I know that we'll keep playing for another 100 years. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Um, I just thought it was appropriate for us to start with the boys. Um, it's all about the boys and their experiences, and I think that uh, hearing from them is a good way to begin. I'd like now to introduce Pastor Tom Korkuk, who's going to do a blessing for the dinner. Good afternoon, everyone. Ooh, that's loud. <laughs> On behalf of the friends and, and members of Archer United Methodist Church, I, uh, I am just pleased and honored to uh, be able to uh, be a part of this celebration of 100 years of scouting for Troop 59. You know, folks will often um, come up to me who are involved in 59 and, and say, just thank you. Thank you so much for offering uh, your facilities. Thank you for, for offering your building um, as a meeting place, as a place for the boys to be able to get together and, and uh, hold their meetings and so forth. And I honestly say, no, thank you, because the boys of 59 and the leadership, they do so much for us, too. It's, it's really a partnership. In, in what I would characterize as ministry. We do ministry together in reaching out to the community, um, helping uh, others, um, reaching out in, in other ways as well. I mean, it, it is about retrieving pasta from the other side of an electric fence, that's true. It's about fun, but it's also about giving back. And uh, 59 is just uh, an important part of what we do and what we support at Archer Church. And uh, I'm just delighted I wouldn't want to be anywhere else tonight but here celebrating 100 years. It's a beautiful evening. Let's give thanks. Join me in a word of prayer. God of all life and, and God of all creation, we've gathered here on the occasion of Troop 59's 100th anniversary, and we gather to give thanks for the gift of scouting. And that as leaders in the community of Allendale, we are blessed to be able to serve alongside our young people and and to offer our support and our wisdom and our strength to this program. God, we thank you for the young men who have been a part of this program over the years and who are inspired to grow in their life through scouting. We thank you for the leaders who have journeyed with the scouts over these past 100 years. The time they gave, the patience they've showed, and the willingness that they've had to serve as mentors. We thank you, God, that scouting teaches a genuine reverence and a healthy respect for all creation, and that it creates opportunities to serve those who are most needy in our world. And so God, continue to bless Troop 59 today and in the future. Give them guidance that they may know that they are blessed with these gifts so that they may be a blessing to others. And help us, God, just to think on this night as we gather around these tables of fellowship that the food that we are about to receive is really already blessed through the goodness of your creation. And we just recognize that. 
All this we pray in your holy name, the great master of all scouts. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much, Pastor. I'd like to now invite up uh, Councilwoman Amy Wazinski to do a presentation. Mr. Gray. to our beautiful Crestwood Lake. Um, I hope you're enjoying this gorgeous day. Um, congratulations to Troop 59 for on your 100th year anniversary. We actually have um, several projects up here at Crestwood Lake that um, the council is very grateful for that Troop 59 has um, completed. We have our uh, floating dock in the lake. Uh, we also have um, a bat house that was recently done, and this year we have brand new life uh, guard chairs and also a new fire pit. So thank you. I'm sure there's probably more throughout the years, but um, those are the last ones that, that were done, and the, the council is very, very grateful for that. So one of our favorite things to do as a council is to read proclamations. So on behalf of the mayor and council, I am honored to uh, read this proclamation to you. Proclamation in honor of the 100th anniversary of Troop 59. Whereas the Boy Scouts of America were founded in 1910 by a charter granted by Congress, and seven years later, a group of Allendale men founded Allendale Troop One. Whereas Allendale Troop One's main activities in the early years were the sale of bonds to support the American effort in World War I, as well as the collection of old, of old newspapers. And whereas in 1920, the Boy Scouts were divided into councils and districts, and that at that time, Troop 1 entered the North Bergen County Council and was reassigned the number 59. Whereas, during the 1930s, the first troop highlight trips began. They were visited by Dan Beard, a pioneer of the scouting movement, and the troop honored Norman Farrell as its first, re first reached the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas during World War II, the troop collected paper, metal, and rubber to support the American war effort, for which 20 scouts earned the General Eisenhower Medal for outstanding service to their country. And whereas throughout the years, the troop has grown under remarkable leadership, becoming one of the premier groups in the area since 1939, Troop 59 has guided over 157 scouts who have achieved the rank of Eagle. This is a testament to the commitment and dedication of all the members of the troop past and present and its leaders throughout the past 100 years. Whereas the value of Troop uh, 59's activities and Eagle Scout projects uh, to non-for-profit organizations is underserved in communities and our own community of Allendale is immeasurable. And whereas the Scout Masters of Allendale's Troop 59 men uh, of generosity of time and talent have led the boys of great promise and helped to instill the true brotherhood of scouting to each member and provided the support, friendship, and mentoring necessary for a scout to live a happy and fulfilling life. And now, therefore, it be resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Allendale hereby recognize and honor Troop 59 on its 100th anniversary and urge Allendale citizens to join in expressing appreciation to this community organization and its leaders for bringing this value-based program to the youth of Allendale. Congratulations, enjoy the day. Thank you very much, Amy. This is a tremendous recognition for the truth, and uh, we really appreciate the support that the town provides the truth. So, for the one. Thank you very much, Andrew. So, just a brief summary of the things that we put together. First of all, my name is Mark McAuliffe, and I was the Centennial Committee uh, Chair for this event. But the event really took on um, a multi-dimensional effort, and the parents that were involved will be named and recognized later. But we tried to do something more than just simply have a party. Uh, as you see on your tables, this uh, extraordinary 
ad journal was put together with the help of historians, photographers, writers, and very thoughtful, loving residents of Allendale. And I hope you'll enjoy it. And I think it's going to be a wonderful uh, memorial to the troop going forward. We also wanted to do a community service project. And later in the evening, you'll be able to see it. We renovated the fire pit here at Crestwood. And, and Ms. Wazinski just acknowledged it. It's a beautiful fire pit. Our scouts did it with the assistance of their leaders. Um, and so it was a give back aspect of the uh, centennial celebration. We also are um, putting together a time capsule. And at this time, I'd like uh, Mr. Peter Barnigan to come up to explain the time capsule. And the good news is it's not going in the ground today. We're going to hopefully everybody will get engaged in uh, preparing profiles and thinking of things they might want to put in the time capsule, but I'm going to give that to Pete. I'll stop talking. Thanks, Mark. So yeah, as Mark mentioned, we're going to be putting together a uh, time capsule. Um, it will be sealed at the Court of Honor that we hold here in September. Um, and what we're going to be collecting is troop bios. I've asked everyone in the troop to uh, provide a bio of themselves uh, through their scouting years with a couple photos, some information about themselves, uh, their time in scouts, uh, and maybe a note to a future scout. Uh, because in 2037, we're going to open the, uh, have the uh, time capsule opened by the then uh, troop master here, hopefully, at their court of honor in 2037. Um, all current members have been given a template for their, their bio, and if anybody would, uh, former members would like to have information about how to send me a bio of themselves, see me later and I'll uh, provide that to you, um, the information. Um, we're putting in the Centennial t-shirts that some of the folks are wearing today. Um, hopefully we get a bigger box, I have a small box in the back there that stuff is being put in. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a bigger box. Um, and any information that you would uh, like to put in there, let me know. I have some information that you can email to us. Um, you can send me an email and we'll get together and figure out how to get your stuff into the box. That's it. Can we give Pete a hand? Well, I have a list of really funny jokes, but I'm, I'm gonna, I think it's time to eat. So what we're going to do, uh, because there's two serving areas, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, do this in as orderly a fashion as possible. Okay, so the first, uh, first speaker uh, that will uh, be coming up is Rebecca Fields. Rebecca is the scout executive for Northern New Jersey Council. She's the top executive in the Northern New Jersey Council in, that represents Bergen County, Essex County, Hudson County, and Passaic Counties. Please give her a round of applause and let's thank Rebecca Fields for joining us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. I just looked up a number and I was surprised, or maybe you're not surprised. This is the largest troop in the entire four counties. So congratulations on that. And my experience has shown the largest troops are usually the ones that have the best program, right? Of course, without a doubt. And I'm sure you're glad that I do not have a long speech, but I do have a few words to say. Since 1917, hundreds of families have been infected by the troop here chartered by Archer United Methodist Church. Countless generations have enjoyed scouting thanks to the commitment of the leadership and the volunteers, parents, and alumni. And part of those 100 years, this troop has been a part of 19 national jamborees, has witnessed nationwide 100 million youth members, 1 million Eagle Scouts, and the introduction of programs such as Cub Scouts, Exploring, Venturing, and now STEM Scouts, which we're starting in the Council in the fall. Good turn for America and countless tons of food raised for the homeless. Troop 59 should be proud of this rich heritage that they've been a part of and continue to be a part of. I hold this challenge to the young guys here, which I think they have left to carry on the tradition for Troop 50, with the opportunity to keep the program going and what it's given you and give back to the community. It's a great time to be in scouting, and thank you, thank you for inviting me, and congratulations on 100 years. This is my
my first centennial, guys, so I'm sorry about that. I don't know if any of you know it, but I'm a family lawyer. That's my field. And um, as a family lawyer, I have uh, the need to sort of check on sort of national uh, stories affecting uh, my field. And one of the ones that I just saw the other day is sort of a sad commentary. Um, I don't know if any of you heard it, but Smokey the Bear and his wife, they're getting divorced. <laughs> Apparently, Smokey loves his wife, but every time she gets hot and, and dressed up, ready to go out to dinner, he takes a shovel out and he pounds her on the head. She just couldn't take it anymore. He, he meant well, but they just need to part ways. Um, nothing? Okay. So our next presenter uh, is the troop committee, uh, excuse me, the troop leader, uh, Nick Gray. He's going to give a few words and provide some historical background. Nick Gray. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Nick Gray, the current Scoutmaster for Troop 59. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for coming today to celebrate our troop's 100th anniversary. I would also like to thank all of our speakers, special guests, Troop 59 alumni, and the Troop 59 Centennial Committee. Mark and Mary McAuliffe, Mark Dworkin, Rich Brook, Cyrus Pavri, Elaine Kehoe, Joe Krause, Phyllis and Gerard Brew, Sal Gracia, Steve and Lynn Novak, Heidi Gross, Martin Masters, Joe Talkowitz, Andrea Pennington, Tom Sambrata, Chuck Zoller, Bill Conroy, Michael Feely, Hans Cunningham, Jess Carey, and Pam Stock. Thank you, everyone. A special acknowledgement is also warranted for our charter organization, Archer United Methodist Church. Thank you, Gary Van Dyke and Pastor Tom Korkich, without which we wouldn't be here. So thank you. So, 100 years of scouting in Allendale. Imagine that. Actually, Allendale has a rich history of volunteerism and service to, to the community over the years. We moved into town in 2008, and in the time that we've been here, we've been able to experience the centennial of the Allendale Volunteer Fire Department in 2010, and this year, Allendale Girl Scouts are celebrating their 85th anniversary, and the Allendale Volunteer Ambulance Corps is also celebrating their 80th anniversary this year. And in two years, the holiday observers will also be celebrating their centennial, which I'm also a member of. And there are several other organizations in town with a long legacy of volunteerism and service to the community. Apologies to those that I didn't mention tonight. These organizations are a part of what makes Allendale such a special place to live. Today I have the privilege of celebrating the centennial of Troop 59 as Scoutmaster. So as you can imagine, family, service, and volunteerism is what Allendale is all about. The Boy Scouts provide an incredible opportunity for your sons to experience life skills, exciting outdoor adventures, monthly camping trips, as well as our high adventure trips to the Bahamas, floodwood canoeing, and the Philmont Trek, along with the camaraderie and establishing bonds that they will cherish for a lifetime. Thank you to everyone that helped support our troop. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. Tomorrow, I have the privilege to preside over an Eagle Court of Honor at Calvary Lutheran Church at 2 p.m. to honor the achievement of the Eagle rank for four of our troop members, Alexander Arkasoy, Daniel Patrick, Samuel Redling, and Patrick Shea. This is the pinnacle of their... This is the pinnacle of their scouting careers, and I hope that many of you can join us to help acknowledge their significant accomplishments. In addition, we just recently added two more to the Eagle rank, Christopher Kinnean and Daniel Mecca. <laughs> and 
And as you've heard earlier in the program, our troop has performed many community projects recently, including do, doing a fall cleanup at, at Fell House and Archer Church. And last month, we helped do weeding of the garlic, what was that, the garlic uh, in weed at the Fell House. And just last weekend, we had several scouts help spread mulch at the celery farm. This is in addition to all the multiple ego projects that benefit our community. And Amy Wilsinski mentioned several that are here right in uh, Crestwood. As you heard, we meet weekly and typically have 50 or more scouts at the meeting, which is about half of our troop. But that's, as you heard from Joe McAuliffe, that's much larger than many troops in our area. You can only imagine the energy that's given off in these meetings. In addition, the boys earn accomplishments of rank advancement credit, participation in team building activities, and of course, the creative games that they come up with. You can only imagine. I encourage you to stay for our campfire ceremony that will follow dessert. Campfires are a tradition for the Boy Scouts, especially skits, songs, and fun. As you heard, the fire pit here at Crestwood was recently built, rebuilt as the troop's contribution to the town in commemoration of our centennial. We will be forming be performing some exciting scout entertainment, definitely worth the price of admission. On a closing note, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize Mark McAuliffe, who is the Troop's Eagle Board of Review Coordinator, as well as the Chairman for tonight's event. He and his committee have done a fantastic job organizing and executing this very special event for all of us. Of course, behind any volunteer is the spouse of that volunteer who involuntarily gets to do as much, if not more, work. Mark and Mary, would you please join me up here so that we can present the troops' token of appreciation for all the work that you've done for making tonight happen. a nice bottle of Cabernet, so thank you both. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and once again, thank you very much for your attendance, and we sincerely appreciate your support. Yours and Scouts. Thank you very much, Nick. So uh, when we think about the outdoors and we think about all the things that you can do outdoors, it reminded me of uh, my friend, the centipede. He was at his house one day, and his other friend came over, and they were talking to each other, and the centipede wanted to play basketball. So he said to his buddy, hey, listen, let's meet at the courts at 1 o'clock, and we'll play some hoops. So his friend goes to the courts at 1 o'clock. There's nobody there. He waits. It's 1.15. Nobody shows up. Where's the centipede? Where is the centipede? About 2 o'clock, the centipede comes in, and his friend says, what, what are you even doing? You said 1 o'clock. He said, I had to put my sneakers on. <laughs> I'm trying to clean it up a little bit, okay? All right, so now I, I, it's with great honor that I'm presenting uh, a member of Troop 59 who uh, dates back several years. His name is Scott Lamb. Scott was, a, I think, a scout in the 90s. Scott? 80s. 80s. Um, Scott's going to share some historical information with us. We welcome you here, Scott. Come on up. Uh, hello, my name is uh, my name is Scott Lamb. I'm very excited to be here at True 59's 100th anniversary in 2017. I was a scout in the 1980s, earned Eagle in 1988, Eagle number 60. 
My brothers Chris and Brian soon followed, uh, earning Eagle in 1990 and 1993, uh, Eagles number 63 and 68, respectively. This was the second time of four times that the troop would have three brothers that made Eagle, the most recent being the Dworkin brothers, I believe. Is that right? <clears throat> 19 times the troop has had two brothers attain Eagle, and as of 2016, I believe, the troop has had a total of 116, now it sounds like 122 Eagle Scouts, which is pretty much amazing. Anyway, in the 1980s, one second. In the 1980s, um, the year 2017 seemed pretty far off. Indeed, the year 2000 still had a slightly science fictional sound to it. We had uh, passed through George, or George Orwell's 1984 in one piece, but Stanley Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 loomed large and mysterious. So 1988, that was the year when the songs of Dirty Dancing and George Michaels, Guns N' Roses and U2 ruled the airwaves, Stephen King and Tom Clancy topped the New York Times bestseller list, Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman and still heartthrob Tom Cruise was top at the box office and won the Academy Award for Best Picture, and the year the action movie uh, genre changed with Die Hard starring Bruce Willis, one of my personal favorites. <clears throat> Later in that year, George H. W. Bush was elected president. To give you some additional perspective, the World Wide Web wouldn't go online until 1991. Imagine that. Uh, in the 1980s, there were some small differences in scouting. We had skill awards that you earned as you went to first class, and merit badges required for Eagle were slightly different. But for the most part, the program was not so different than it is today, which is probably goes a long way to explain the success of scouting, particularly in Allendale. Troop 59 was the largest unit by far back then, and it still is obviously today, and really has been through its, its entire history. Uh, we went on weekend campouts on almost a monthly basis and went to summer camp for two weeks. The food at camp was basically the same, some good, some less so. It is true that uh, camping-related technologies have greatly improved, tents, backpacks, etc., but the essentials remain the same. Uh, as to specific memories of mine, uh, I think my favorite was in 1986, excuse me, uh, when after returning from Philmont, I went to on a canoe trip in the Adirondacks with my dad and my brother Chris. The trek was arranged by Mr. Fries, who was the father of Peter Fries, who was 59's 50th Eagle Scout. Uh, canoeing with my father is undoubtedly one of my fondest memories, uh, but what perhaps was most memorable about that trip was my brother Chris and his canoeing partner and good friend Mark. Mark, by the way, uh, who's not here, thankfully, hates when I tell this story. Uh, Chris was kind of a big guy and Mark was kind of a small guy, but Mark insisted on being the steersman in the back of the canoe. Uh, they were the youngest on the trip and routinely were the slowest canoe, though not usually by much. That is until we got into an extremely windy and somewhat swampy fish hatchery stream connecting us to Saranac Lake. Uh, if they fell only a, really a little ways behind, we couldn't see them at all, but we could hear them. Over and over, we would hear Mark yell with some level of anxiety, Mr. Freeze, which was usually followed by Chris yelling at Mark to shut up. But we all made it through, and Chris and Mark and I are still good friends to this day. And that is perhaps one of the things that makes True 59 as strong as it has always been, strong friendships and strong families. It is also due in a large measure, I'm sure, to a tradition of top-notch adult guidance and dedication. In my day, the scoutmaster was the indefatigable John Seaback, affectionately known as Knock, who ultimately led the troop for an astonishing 34 years from 65 to 99. Unfortunately, Knock passed away this past December, and so he can't be here today, though I'm sure he's here in spirit. Uh, what do I say about Nock? In my years on this earth, he is in my mind the example of the good man. He was devoted not only to Troop 59, but also to the Order of the Arrow, our summer camp at the time, Floodwood Mountain Reservation, and his church, Guardian Angel. He always made it appear that he led with great ease, though in hindsight, I know he worked tirelessly to make the program a great one. Indeed, sh shortly before he passed away, he told me uh, he himself was not sure how he was able to do all the things that he did. What I personally miss about him uh, is his great sense of humor. He was a quick wit and always ready to laugh. The highlight of our friendship, I think, uh, was when I got to canoe with him, and I think it was 1996, more or less. 
when I was an occasional assistant scoutmaster, and we just got to talk about everything under the sun. Now it turns out that Nock was a neighbor of my father, growing up on Park Avenue here in Allenville, as well as a neighbor of Mr. Bob Buellman, known affectionately as Mr. B. And Mr. B was Troop 59 Scoutmaster three times in the 1940s and 50s. And when he wasn't the Scoutmaster, he was an assistant Scoutmaster, I think, until the late 1970s. He was the example of the good man to knock at my dad. Uh, my father has many fond memories of Mr. B, uh, the following of which is my favorite. To set the scene, excuse me, my father was in Troop 59 while World War II was being fought, and Franklin Delano Roosevelt was president. In those days, Allendale was strongly Republican, a strongly Republican town, which apparently it still is. Uh, indeed, the joke at the time was, I saw a Democrat once, and he looked just like the rest of us. Um, Mr. B was a staunch Republican, but my father, no doubt a precocious youth, decided to taunt Mr. B about how great FDR was, and Mr. B would have none of it. He had my father hogtied, arms and legs tied together behind his back, and left to think better of his political affiliation. To this day, my father tells that story with great joy and affection, though he is still a great admirer of FDR. Uh, one of my father's best uh, friends growing up was John Hover, uh, Mr. Hover to me, who appeared, in, who happened to be True 59's 10th Eagle Scout in 1946. Mr. Hover is now 87 and lives in Washington State, and I got a chance to talk with him recently about his experiences in True 59. Back in those days, because of the war, uh, there were far fewer men around, uh, as many were drafted and were, and were fighting. Uh, thus, the boys of Troop 59 sometimes had to fend for themselves. Uh, well, one weekend, uh, there happened to be a camporee off in far away Mawa. Uh, as there were no male adults around to help, Mr. Hover decided, as patrol leader, uh, to organize his, his patrol and hike there anyway. Uh, he said it was a bit of like herding cats, but they eventually made it to the campery. Uh, when they got there, the adult leaders were a little flummoxed as to you know, what was going on with them, since there were no adults, but they were impressed by their get up and go. So I will leave you with uh, these thoughts shared uh, by Mr. Hover with me. When he was a boy, his family did not have a great deal of money. The effects of the Great Depression were still being felt. But the Boy Scouts, and specifically Troop 59, under Mr. B's leadership, offered him opportunities he would never otherwise have had. Mr. Hoover went on to college and became an industrial engineer who worked on the C-133 aircraft program and on nuclear power plant facilities. And to this day, Mr. Hoover attributes his success in later life and those of his contemporary Boy Scouts, in large part to the skills and confidence he learned in Troop 59. And he and I agreed that almost no day goes by where we don't use the skills we learned in Boy Scout Troop 59. What a great legacy. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much, Scott. I, I really appreciate that presentation and uh, for you making the time to be here today. Um, so um, I had back surgery. That's why it's a little weird for me to get up and down. I'm, I'm recovering, but I'll be much more limber at the next centennial, I promise. <laughs> I'd like some, uh, I'd like everyone uh, here tonight to uh, be aware of the extraordinary generosity that uh, benefited this evening. Um, first of all, Market Basket did a wonderful job with the food and they, they were kind enough to discount the, the fee to us, so uh, I want to make sure we appreciate that and go there all the time. In Sarah's supermarkets donated 20 cases of water, 10 cases of soda, multiple plates of cookies and an enormous sheet cake. And they didn't even ask a question. They're a great institution. Let's thank ShopRite. <laughs> Reinhold's Bakery donated cookies to the event, too. And again, let's make sure we appreciate their efforts as well. For the adults in the room, uh, one of our uh, 
town members. Chris Rahm works for Brooklyn Brewery, and he was kind enough to donate some wonderful Brooklyn lager for the adults. So let's make sure we keep them in mind next time we go to the pub. The Allendale Bar and Grill helped us keep things cold and store things, and uh, let's make sure we, we don't forget where the Allendale Bar and Grill is. <laughs> the tent, the amazing tent that was going to be over there, and then it was going to be over there, and there it is. And it was also going to be so much bigger than that. Um, Taylor Rental also discounted the cost of the tent, so when the next time you're planning your, your banquet, Keep them in mind. Uh, let's thank Taylor Rental. <laughs> Ramsey Outdoor and Dick's Sporting Goods also donated, Cam Moore donated some uh, gift certificates that we're going to be presenting in a minute or two. Uh, so let's make sure we get over there as well. <laughs> Did I mention Dairy Queen? <laughs> well, you wouldn't believe it. Dairy Queen. I mean, do you think they got to do anything? People just go there, they just line up, and that's it. But Dairy Queen donated 100 ice cream sandwiches to this event. So let's thank Dairy Queen. <laughs> Where's that? Home Depot? We also were um, benefited by supplies from Home Depot. 200, uh, a $200 gift certificate, and that was uh, another uh, great contribution to the event. Sorry, that fact I just had to tighten up a little bit. So, uh, I'd like uh, some of our scouts to come up now. Um, do you love this t shirt? How about this t shirt? Do you, don't you just love it? This t shirt is designed by two scouts. Two of our scouts did uh, the design of the front patch and the back patch. But before I introduce them, I'd like the following scouts to come up on the stage. Adam Soule, Luke Junod, Charlie Peruzzi, Dan Talkowitz, Owen Roy, and Purus Pavri. Well, these young men were kind enough to make an effort and design logos for us. And all of them did an exceptional job. Um, who designed this one? Me. Come on over here. What's your name? Owen Roy. Owen Roy. This is Owen Roy. Owen's responsible for what's, what's uh, on the front of the shirt. Um, he did it, I think, in blue initially. Yep. But uh, it's, a, it's just a wonderful design. It's one that's going to be around for a while. I'm sure we're going to see it on a lot of other things. Um, and I, I want to thank you all for doing that. Yeah. For us. Shout out your name for us. I'm Porus Pavri. Porus designed the back of the shirt. I'm going to turn around so you can get a full look at it. Of course, that's an exceptional job. You did a wonderful job. Owen, uh, Owen and Porus designed the shirts. But... This was a competition, and the bottom line is that every one of these kids did a great job. They spent the time. We, we didn't have to ask them to do it. They, they came forward and did a, a wonderful and great presentation of art, and uh, it's going to be around for a while. Um, I just wanted all of you to be recognized. Could you state your full names? Charlie Peruzzi, Luke Juno, Alex Soul. Great job, guys. Owen and Pop, I forest stay right here. Okay. Stay, stay, stay. We have a few prizes for these young men because they, they are going to be around in, in our memories and in our eyes for many years. This is a gift certificate for you yeah. and a few gift certificates for you. It's the same. Equal value. Okay. Don't spend them in one place. Um, as we were preparing this uh, centennial, I was 
sent an email by Tom Zombrada that was sent to the troop in 2014. And it was sent by a, a gentleman named Richard Davis. Richard Davis was an Eagle Scout from 1946. And uh, Having seen the email from Tom, I emailed Richard back, and it was interesting because Richard lives in Illinois now, and his grandson was supposed to be graduating from high school this weekend in Manahawk, and he planned on being here. But he got sick, and he didn't make the trip. But he sent me this email, and I thought I'd read it to you guys because uh, it really said a lot to me. Richard is 87. Richard, in planning to come out here, got in touch with two other Eagle Scouts by email. These two gentlemen, who have not been in Scouts for so many years, these three people, three Eagle Scouts from the same year, stay in touch by email, 87 years old. They care that much about Scouts. And when they, they clued me into the uh, conversation and they were kind enough to send us a photograph, which is in your Centennial Journal, of them receiving their eagle. It was a public. It was in, in one of the local newspapers back in 1946. Uh, I just, you know, it's hard to really appreciate a hundred years. It really is. It's hard to get it. But that really struck me that the value that they placed on their friendships from that time, the fact that they're still in touch. One of the gentlemen's in Washington. I'm not going to read the email because it's a little choppy, but I just thought as an anecdote to appreciate how people stay together and, and what keeps them going. Uh, I'm sure that their friendships along the years really mattered. So with that last note, um, I wanted every person under seven years old to come up in front of me here. Anyone under seven years old? Any under seven year olds? Anybody over 65 years old? Come on up here, please. Anyone over 65 that likes ice cream? Well, you guys get first dabs on the ice cream sandwiches, okay? So they're, they're right over by the, uh, the desserts. If you guys head over, you're going to get an ice cream sandwich. What did I forget? Sure. Um, we just have one more presentation while you're getting your, your ice cream sandwiches. The campfires. Yeah, I'm going to mention that after. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we wrap up, the uh, former Scoutmaster Mark Dworkin is going to uh, be running some activities at the uh, campfire after we finish eating. Um, we would like to recruit some scouts to go down. Any of the scouts that are going to be involved in skits with Mr. Dworkin should go meet at the campfire now so that they can prepare. And uh, Mr. Zambrato is going to say a few words. Thank you, Mark. Uh, this is impromptu, so please excuse me if it doesn't come off polished. But there's a few people in this room that we really have to acknowledge. Um, we have in the room one, two, three scout masters, four scout masters and an assistant scout master that have served throughout the years. We've already acknowledged scout master Seaback who served for many, many years. But um, here today we have scout master Ray Ionico. Ray, where are you? We have an assistant scout master Jerry Goodman. There you go. We have Scoutmaster Mark Morgan. My son is a Scoutmaster. And our current Scoutmaster, Nick Gray. Where is Nick? Okay, okay. So, speaking for all the Scoutmasters, this message is for the Scouts who are still in the room. I know a lot of them out on the field. Um, so I've heard people say being a Scoutmaster, being an adult leader, being an adult leader, um, is a job. It's really not a job. It's a joy. One of the 
The biggest fulfillments I've had in my life is watching our scouts, our youth, come in as 11-year-old fifth graders and lead the troop as young men. And it's, it's wonderful to watch. So I want to thank all the scouts who are here who made my time as Scoutmaster and Ray's and Mark's and Jerry's and, and Nick currently made it a joy to do. So thank you. We're not done with yet. We got one more. Um, first of all, if I could ask all of the Eagle Scouts in the room to please stand. Thank you guys for your efforts. I bring that up because tomorrow, uh, as most if not all of you know, we have an uh, Eagle Scout Court of Honor at 2 p.m. Uh, it's at Calvary, and it would be wonderful if as many of you could come and celebrate the amazing accomplishments of our five Eagle Scouts who are going to be receiving their awards and their acknowledgments tomorrow. Uh, they, their names have been mentioned before, but I, I did want to invite you all to attend as it's going to be a, a really an extraordinary ceremony. So, uh, with that said, thank you for coming.